Hello, hello everybody. This is Rio with Posh Plum Plants and today I am coming at you with a video on how to use the Mommy Lay Digital Planner. So if that's something that you're interested in or maybe kind of had a little bit of curiosity about, stay tuned because I'm going to take you from A to Z all the way through how to use this digital planner. Okay, step one is you need to download a couple of things. So you need to decide what app you're gonna use for your digital planning. Myself, I use GoodNotes. I think the majority of the digital planning community uses GoodNotes, but there's a couple of other apps out there that are available. Um, GoodNotes, I should mention, is an Apple-only app. So GoodNotes does have a couple of versions. They've got version 4 and they've got version 5. Myself, I will be using version 5. So downloading an app is the first thing to do. And then once you've done that, by the way, Android can definitely do digital planning as well. There's a lot of different apps. You just kind of have to do some research and find one that's good for you. Um, I know Notability is a good one. Zoto is a good one. Uh, but I'll link them uh, in the description box below. So anyway, once you've got your chosen app, then you want to download the Mommy Lay Planner. So you can do that easily from mommylaydesigns.com. And once you are on her absolutely gorgeous website, you are going to click shop. And when the menu opens, you will click over here where it says freebie. Uh, but there's a couple of things in here right now for freebies. There's some um, digital paper clips and there is the Mommy Lay Digital Planner. So you'll go ahead and click on that digital planner add it to your shopping cart. Even though it is zero dollars, you still have to go through the normal process of checkout. And then once you've got that downloaded, then you can start to play. So, after it is downloaded from the website, let's go in here and I can kind of show you how it'll look. Once you click on the download link, there's three files here. There's two zip files that you want to download. Uh, the Mommy Lay Digital Planner .zip and the Mommy Lay Freebie Digital Planner Essentials. So download both of those onto your computer. Um, you can't really do it from your iPad, at least if you can. I haven't figured out a way to do that. I don't really think you can unzip files on an iPad very easily and get them into GoodNotes. But um, download these onto your computer unzip them and put them into whatever cloud platform you use. If that's Google Drive, iCloud, Dropbox, any of those, put them into your preferred cloud. And then from your cloud, once you open GoodNotes, you will click on new and you will click on import and then find it wherever it is in that cloud platform. Mine is right here. You'll just click on the Mommy Lay Digital Planner and it will import right away and you can see it right over here. I actually have two of them. This one already has all kinds of plans and things in it, so we'll look at that one later. But this is the brand new blank one. Just tap it and now you are ready to plan. So first thing, I will take you through GoodNotes, um, the toolbar and kind of how to do a couple of things from a planner girl standpoint. Now GoodNotes is used for taking notes and doing all kinds of fun things like that, but I'm just going to talk to you from a planner girl standpoint, some of the things that you might use this app for and how to use them. So let's go over the toolbar at the top. So the very first one I want to go over is kind of like a highlighting bar. So if you click on that, you will see a blue bar that shows up on my planner and then of course this whole space is green because that's where my box is. If I move this box around, you can see that it basically is magnifying anywhere I go. And so this is a helpful little tool. You'll just leave that someplace on the planner. So it's helpful anytime you're writing something to be zoomed in. And if you like doing that, you can use that little zoom in tool. Otherwise, you can just close it and write right on your planner this way. Whichever way you prefer. I'm gonna hit undo over here to get rid of all those white squiggles. Right next to that is your pen. And mine is on a Bluetooth stylus. I have the Apple Pencil. This is the second generation. And the iPad that I'm using is the iPad, the 12.9 inch, um, the third generation. So you don't have to have these things. You can use any iPad. Uh, with good notes and I used to use uh, 
gosh, it was a much smaller iPad um, that I had, a much older one, and I used to use it with like a third-party stylus, and it worked out in GoodNotes just fine. So you don't absolutely have to have these tools. Okay, once you click on the fountain or on the pen tool, you'll see there's three different pen styles. You've got a fountain pen, a ball pen, and a brush pen. There and these other settings, we won't really go over this. It's not really important right now, but we'll go over the way that the pens react. So the fountain pen is one that has pressure sensitivity. So if I'm doing light feather strokes, you'll see that, or if I'm pushing a little bit harder, you'll see that the stroke gets a little bit thicker. So can see how different it looks with pressure sensitivity. The next pen is the ball pen, which does not change for pressure sensitivity. It will stay the exact same thickness if you do feather-like strokes or if you push really hard. Same thickness. Then the last one is the brush pen. So this one is meant to be kind of like your normal, and forgive me because I cannot hand letter to save my life, <laughs> but that is what this brush pen is meant to do okay that's it for the three different pen styles if you want to change your colors you've got a color palette over here so mine has these three colors you can choose these three colors to be whatever colors you want as like your three go-to's for example you've got all kinds in here in what is called the preset panel these are all presets and then you can also go to custom and you've got all kinds of colors here. If you know the hexadecimal code, you can put that in here. And then there's also a color wheel. So lots of different ways to choose colors for your pen. I'm just gonna go back to presets and leave it right there. The eraser tool is pretty self-explanatory. There's three different sizes here that you can use and they erase whatever handwriting you've got on there. If you tap it again, there's a menu. You can clear the entire page except for your planner, of course. You can erase entire strokes, which I find that to be handy. So if I write something on here and I use the eraser tool and I've got this erase entire stroke, all I have to do is tap it in one spot and the whole entire thing goes away as opposed to if I don't have that and I tap in one spot, of course I'm only going to erase the little bit that I'm touching. You can also do erase highlighter only. So if you are somebody who likes to highlight, that is the next function here. And if you are highlighting text and you want to undo that highlighting, you can always hit the eraser, hit erase highlighter only, and then of course it's not going to touch any of your handwriting or your text boxes or anything like that. It's just going to erase the highlighter. This next function down here is called auto deselect. And so if you have that turned on, when you're using the eraser and you've got your eraser down, as soon as you lift it up, it's going to go back to whatever last tool you had. So it's nice where, let me put some highlighting down. It's nice that if you want to come in here, click on the highlighter and highlight this little portion here. If you let go, it goes right back to my last tool so I don't have to come back up here and click the highlighter again. I can just keep going. So it's really efficient that way. So I'm going to turn this off, highlighter only. and kind of do a little bit of this so we can get a better idea. So it's on the pen tool. I click my eraser and I erase just what I want to erase. If I pick my pen up, it goes right back to the pen, and without even selecting anything at the toolbar, I can just keep writing. So very, very handy. Okay, I'm gonna choose the largest size and kind of clean this all up here. Okay, the highlighter, we've already seen a couple times. It has the same kind of color palettes or, or menu that the pen had. So you can use your three favorite colors right here at the top. You've got an entire, um, preset palette here and then you can always go into custom and choose some custom colors as well which is really handy when you are trying to highlight things and write things and have them match a color palette for a really cute sticker kit like mommy lay <laughs> the next tool is the shape tool anything that you draw with a shape tool is going to try to perfect so if you're drawing a circle it's going to try to be a perfect circle if you're drawing a square trying to be a perfect square uh, again, you can use the fountain pen, the ball pen, or the brush pen for any of that. I'm gonna stick with the fountain pen. If you want to have fill color, you can do that. So let me move to a different spot on my planner here. I'm gonna do a little bit of it over here on the white so we can get a better idea of how it works. 
So on the shape tool, I can have a fill color here. So if I'm drawing a circle, the circle will actually fill in with the color as well. So if I come over here, I can, let me pick a darker color. I can go ahead and draw a circle. And of course it's not gonna be anywhere near perfect, but that's the point. So if I attempt to draw a circle, it will snap it to a perfect circle. And then you can kind of see it's shaded in here. So if I were to hit the undo, the border would go away, but I'm still left with kind of like a highlighter, a little shape of a circle here. And of course I can undo it again and it's completely gone. Um, sometimes it's a little more difficult to do something like a square because it does all these other kind of shapes here, polygons. <laughs> but if you are trying to make like a perfect checkbox, you can do it. Oh, I'm having such a hard time with a perfect square, but it will, it will do it for you. Um, especially if you have lined paper or dotted paper, it does it much easier. Next tool is the lasso tool, which you, as a planner girl, you're gonna be using this one a lot. So this is the tool that you're gonna to use to move things around. So again, it's got some options here. It's got text boxes, images, handwriting, and you can toggle these things on and off as you need them. Um, so this is a lot easier to see when you actually have something to move. So let me just do a little bit of handwriting. And if I were to click on the lasso tool, as long as handwriting is green, then when I lasso around it, it will move it anywhere I need it to go. Also, if I press on it again, I can resize it if I want it smaller or larger. So this is really nice if you are trying to get something within a full box or like a confined space, but your handwriting is maybe a little bit too big or oops, you just went over the box a little bit. Lasso around it and you can bring it down in size just a touch and make it fit perfectly, which is one of the things I love about digital planning. You can never mess up. It's awesome. And I'm not ruining a spread if I do mess up or if I get a little bit too close to an edge and I really wanted my handwriting to be centered. You just lasso around it and move it so it's perfectly centered and then planner piece. <laughs> okay, so um, if I were to, oh, let's see what else. We've got. Another menu that I wanted to show you in here is if you tap on it again, you can copy it long press and paste. So if you're doing the same thing all week long, you can write, you know, yoga, or uh, if you're going to school, whatever school class is you're doing, you can just copy and paste as many of these as you need. So you can either undo or use the eraser to get rid of those. And yep, that's basically how the lasso tool works. When we get into actually planning, I will show you this one a little bit more. It's a lot easier when you've got stickers and different things in here that you're moving around, but that's just a general on how to use the lasso. For good notes here, the next one is your photos. So if you tap on this, it will give you your camera roll right here, which is super, super convenient. So you can just tap on anything and it will come right in, which is awesome. You can resize from there and put things wherever you want them to be. Or you can just tap on the middle of the screen and then your camera roll will come up with all of your albums and you can just search for whatever you need and just plop it in like that. It is so, so easy. The next one is to actually take a picture. You can take one within GoodNotes. Of course, this is gonna show black because I'm on my desk, but you can actually take a photo and import it right into GoodNotes right here. And the last one is text. So if you click on that text box, again, you've got some color options here, bold, italic, and then all different kinds of ways to change your fonts and your text and all of that. So whatever option you have set up, that is what's gonna happen when you type. So if you want to change an option or if you're doing something and you think, oh man, I didn't want that color, it's best to have all your options selected before you use the type tool. Sometimes it's a little finicky and doesn't want you to, or doesn't allow you to change things as easily afterward. So I'll show you what I mean. So here's just a general hello. I'm going to use my lasso tool over here and make sure that text boxes is selected. 
And the nice thing about GoodNotes, I don't really have to select the whole thing. It knows exactly what I want here. So even if I just select a little bit on the O, it brings the whole thing for me. I don't have to actually go all the way around the whole thing. So that's really important to note. I can even just do one of these. And as long as I've got it selected in here somewhere, I actually now have a handle and I can move things around. And it's a lot easier to do things that way. I love drawing a nice big handle so that um, I, I think it actually can be a problem if you are trying to highlight the whole thing and like really your hand has to be right on top of it to kind of position things. You can't really see obviously what's going on underneath your hand and if you're trying to line something up perfectly it gets a little bit annoying that way. So that's one of the reasons why I like to draw a nice big handle and then my hand doesn't have to block it at all. I can have my pen and everything way over here and move it around and put it exactly where I need. So I'm going to long press and edit. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and click on this here and then double click to highlight. And then I can try to come in here and do um, some different things here. If I want bold, italic, if my font will allow me to do those kind of things. You can do that from right in here. If it's highlighted, you can also start to change some things. If I use the lasso tool and I select it and I long press, you can resize it that way as well. Okay, so those are the basics of the toolbar at the top here. Um, the next thing that we'll go through is going to be tabs and bookmarks and actually getting in here and learning how all of these things work. Okay, so let's talk about tabs. So most of the time, if you have a planner in GoodNotes, it's gonna have tabs on it. The Mommy Lay Planner absolutely has tabs on it. Um, any of the ones that you could possibly purchase from Etsy, most of them have tabs and understanding how they work is super, super important. So. There's a couple of different ways that you can manipulate the tabs in here. First of all, usually you're using your pen or your pencil. You can do it with a finger as well to tap on a tab and it will take you wherever that tab is linked. This little guy right up here in GoodNotes 5, in GoodNotes 4, this is actually here in the toolbar, but in GoodNotes 5, it's way up here. And this actually turns the links on and off for you. So you can see how it kind of changes and takes that toolbar away. So if the toolbar is away and you've got this turned on, then your links will work, okay? But if you don't have that turned on and your toolbar is here and you click on a link, it's not going to take you there unless you do a long press and open link. So you can do that as well. Honestly, I'm not sure if that is a GoodNotes 5 only capability. I just discovered it because um, I always get annoyed when I'm in here and I'm doing things and I'm on a toolbar and then I have to come all the way up here and click this in order to get a tab to work. I think that's really annoying. So I just discovered that you can long press and open a link on any of these tabs and they work. So that's a really, really nice um, feature that I just discovered. So I could be slow. <laughs> Let's go through these tabs. So you've got a monthly, weekly, daily, and to do, and then you've got January through December. So in the Mommy Lay Planner, if you click on the monthly tab and open the link, then you're gonna see that the tabs move around just a little bit as though you were flipping through a book. So if you're flipping through a book, sometimes the tabs at the top or tabs on the side might move around. So just be aware that it is meant to replicate a real book or a real planner. So that your tabs might move around just a little bit, but of course they're always gonna be along the top or along the sides. Um, so they will continue to make sense, I promise. This extras tab right here that you might see is only going to show up on the monthly page here. So if you click that, the extras, it's gonna take you to a couple extra insert styles. So I'll show you all of these in just a minute, but I wanted to let you know that when you're dealing with the tabs in the Mommy Lay Planner, and you're on that monthly tab, this is the only place that that extras tab is going to show and you most likely are gonna use it. So I just wanted to point that out ahead of time. 
Another important thing to keep in mind is there may be tabs on your planner that you have here, but GoodNotes also has a way to kind of bookmark things and help keep you organized that way. So a couple of little functions that you have up here. You have, um, the first one is an arrow that will take you back to your main library or your document section. So you could have, as I do, you could have a bunch of different books in here and uh, it will keep everything organized, most likely alphabetically, but you can also do it by date. So that's what that is up here. The next one is these four little boxes. That shows you every single page in your planner. So it's also another way to navigate through your book. So this one in particular has 63 pages, and you can see as you're scrolling through the different dashboards and you can see where your monthly pages are so it kind of gives you a bird's eye view of this entire planner i'm going to close that oh actually let's go back in here really quick that's the thumbnail view the next view is the favorites view which once you're bookmarking things you will want to use that and the outline view um it is a, a way to map your documents, but we'll, we'll talk about that in another video. But for now, just keep in mind there's a thumbnail view and then a favorites view. So I'm gonna close that. You can also search your planner. If you are searching your handwriting or your text, it will do either one. And you can search right from this bar here. And then this here is how you make a page a favorite. So if you make that red, then it will save as a favorite. And you can see right here, I've got that page as my favorite. It now shows up. So thumbnail will show everything and you can see the little red flag here. Click on favorites and there it is. And so you can just put like, let's say the start of your week or the specific daily page that you're on. You can put those right in here and you can change those links around as days and weeks go by so that you always have the most current right here in your favorites. So let's go ahead and get into the fun parts of this planner. So as you can see, there's a monthly, weekly, daily, and to-do tab at the top, and you have your January through December right here. Now, if you click on the monthly tab, it's going to take you to the monthly tab, and then right behind that page starts January, and then it just goes all the way through the end of the year. So that's how the monthly tab works. You can just click on it and it goes right to all of your months and it's one month right after the other. Okay. If you click on your weekly tab, it'll go into the different weekly sections. Each month has its own weekly section. Does that make sense? So you can click on the tab and it'll take you to the beginning of the weekly section for that month. But you can also click on each month and behind each month dashboard, you have the weekly section for that particular month. And she's given you two weeks for each month and then it goes to the next dashboard. And that is because you can always take a page and copy it and put it behind another. So if you have a month where you need four weeks or five weeks, you can do that all on your own. So don't get the planner and think, oh my gosh, there's only two weeks for every month. What do I do? So I'll show you how to add that in. You'll go to the thumbnail view here. And as you can see, this is the beginning of the weekly section. This is the January dashboard. Here's the two January weeks, and then it goes right into February. So if I click right on this little arrow here next to the last weekly spread, I can hit that down arrow and you can either add a page before, add a page after, duplicate, add the page to outline, which we're not gonna do now, export or even delete it. So you can just hit duplicate and it'll add another one, hit duplicate again, and now I've got four weeks in January to plan. So that is how you would add your pages for the rest of the weeks for this planner. Okay, so let's go back to the main page and hit that weekly tab and the beginning of each month has a beautiful vision board so you can put pictures in here, you can do stickers and drawing, whatever you want to do, whatever gives you vision, go ahead and put that here on your vision board so that each month has a different vision as you go. 
The next tab we'll go to is the daily tab. Again, there's a vision board for the beginning of your daily section. And then swipe to the next page. And this is the main layout for the daily section. So there are three of those before it skips to another type of weekly insert. So if you like this one better than the other weekly, you can basically copy this and use this instead. So let's say that you like this layout best for your weekly as opposed to let's say this layout for your weekly. You can come in here and you can duplicate it and then you can drag and drop or long press and drop and move them to wherever you want them to be. Okay, I'm just gonna take the old ones out of this section, put them at the back of my planner for now. Now don't forget that these weekly sections or these weekly inserts have the months written up here, but the other one that we're switching over to do not. So it's more of an undated, more of a general insert. So it doesn't say December or any month at the top of the insert, but it is a different, um, a different layout if you want. You can use that if you prefer these to these inserts here. Okay, so back to the daily section here. These are the daily inserts, and then here is even a different insert for the weekly spread. So I believe altogether you're given three different inserts for the weekly spreads. Um, and then another tip is at the very last page that you have in here, so you can see the very last one I have is a week in December. So if you pull, do you see how it says release to add a page? If you pull your last page, it will duplicate another one right after. So you can just keep pulling and it will duplicate. So if you look now, yep, I've got three Decembers. So that's just a little um, extra tip that works for the very last page and works for the very first page. Whoops, why do I have December up here? Let's bring you all the way down. <laughs> and I'll just throw it in with the rest of the December inserts. So you can see just how easy it is to move and order around just long press or drag and drop. You can duplicate, you can add blank pages before and after. So it is very, very customizable. The last tab we'll look at is the to do tab, which again takes you to a dashboard that's got a vision board. And the next page is to do lists. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You've got eight separate to do lists here. And of course, if you need more, you can duplicate these. You can even move them around to different sections. If you want a to-do list at the beginning of every week, you can do that. If you want a to-do list at the beginning of every month, you can do that. Whatever order you want these pages to be in, um, that is completely your choice. So the last thing I wanna show you about this Mommy Lay Planner is the extra essentials that came with it. So I don't have them in this particular planner here. I've actually got them and if you see up here, I've got two different tabs. That's because I've got multiple books open. You can do that. You can have multiple books open. So what I do is I have a book that holds just my stickers and then I've got one for my planner. So some people like to put their stickers inside their planner. I'll show you what that looks like uh, to have your stickers inside your planner in just a minute. I prefer to have a completely different book and then access them from a different tab. So this is another version of this Mommy Lay Planner that I have. I've taken all of the essentials and put them here on the last page. And I can take these and use my lasso tool. Let me make sure it's set up on images. I can use my lasso tool and move them around or copy them and put them throughout my planner. And you can see right here, I've used several of them plus some other Mommy Lay digital files, some Patreon files, and I've created a layout inside the Mommy Lay Planner. So these extras are just gorgeous, and I believe they're actually Lay's handwriting, which I love. <laughs> and you can use these again and again and again and make as many spreads as you want with them. And you can kind of get an idea here or start to get an idea of what is possible um, inside the Mommy Lay Planner with this spread here. 
holy cow you guys where did the time go I just checked and it looks like this is gonna be a 30 minute video so thank you so so much for sticking in this video so long for me if you're interested in using the mommy lay planner or digital planning in GoodNotes I hope you got some value out of this I was gonna show you in this video how to do this spread right here but oh my gosh the time has just flown by and I can't believe we're already at 30 minutes so stay tuned for the next video which is going to show you exactly how to do this planner spread right here using all the tools in GoodNotes 5 using um, your iPad and your Apple Pencil if you have that or any other stylus if you have that instead um, but otherwise I will catch you guys in the next video bye <laughs>